Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a Division E game tonight. A matchup between Deep Fried Ming Balls and Wood League Express. I am so sorry. I am having like a night where everything that could go wrong it did go wrong, and we are a little bit delayed. Thank you all for hanging on so tightly. So glad all of you could come join us tonight. These teams are in the lobby getting ready. My name is Isaac, and I am bringing you a match that I have been hyped up to bring for so long. I've been able to follow both of these teams closely in their quest to get to the top of Division E. And tonight, we have Deep Fried Ming Balls, the number one seed, going up against Wood League Express, who I believe are the number uh, three or four seed, but they have had a really good, they're the number three seed right now, one point off from that number two spot, but they've had a really, really strong second half of their season. They are coming on really good in the uh, playoff phase. Let me get you guys over to the map real quick so you can see what's going on between these two teams. Wood League Express, they won the coin toss. They elected to get the map choice, so they banned out Infernal Shrines and Towers of Doom. Meanwhile, Deep Fried Ming Balls banned out Curse Hollow and Tomb of the Spider Queen. So we get to go to Volskaya Foundry first, picked by Wood League Express. And if you were on my uh, cast last night, we started off on Volskaya there as well, and I like to comment that the game always goes long. So we do see sometimes these priority of compositions going towards these later game champions than we typically see. I love all of the comments coming out in chat so far. Thank you all so much for the love. I'm really glad that I got to be here tonight and cast this one. I was so looking forward to it. And uh, I hope you all are as excited as I am to get this thing going. They're asking if I said I was ready. <laughs> I, I wrote I was ready so long ago, but they're having so much fun in draft chat that they ended up missing it. But I said, I am ready. These teams are ready. We're getting ready for the draft. I wish I could have done more of a hyped up introduction, but I literally pulled in the door from work like three minutes before this match was supposed to start. And then we had just the, the craziest scenarios, scenarios unfolding in the house like as i pulled in and i was like oh my god i may not actually get to cast tonight i gotta figure out what's going on make sure that everybody's okay everything's fine i think i'll check in on people as the cast is going on but I think everything is under control we're good to go and we are getting into draft number one tonight wood league express oh they have first pick so i guess this was a pick by deep fried being balls i thought i said the the mention that wood league express was the one that got the pick here so we'll see what's going on uh, maybe I just got bed, fed some bad intel, but Wood League Express is the one that is starting us off with the bands tonight. Looking at these two teams, I mean, I just got to cast Deep Fried Ming Balls last week. We got to see some great offlane play, Gazlo play coming out of Huli, and uh, some absolutely clutch performance by Silver Arrow on those mage champions. So things like Li Ming could be banned out here, Mephisto being the first. I did get told last week that the Hen plays a very, very very, very aggressive and uh, painful Valera. So maybe if that doesn't get banned out, we may see that as well. Ice X2 go burr. Love it. Momo Nucleosis. And, uh, but we do see it is the Mephisto and the Malganus getting banned out here first. The Malganus is a pretty big flavored, uh, favored, flavored, favored character coming out on the side of Wood League Express. They've had a lot of success with the Malganus lately, bringing them out on a map like Alteric Pass and doing absolutely beautiful things with that Malganus. So getting a respect ban going in their favor. So, so far, two respect bans coming out from either side of these teams. And we do see the Deathwing being the next one. Real quick, between this next shout-out, Gretsch Face Killer and Sarushkas. Sarushkas? I probably butchered that, but thank you both so much for the follows. I do appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. Hope you're ready for some awesome hot action. There is tons of it to be picked up on this channel moving forward into playoffs. Tyke is going to be that last ban. And here we go. The Gazlo steal. They saw what Gazlo was doing with Huli last week. They saw a lot of scary things coming out of Huli on that Gazlo. And so Wood League Express taking it away, getting it for High Admiral instead. Going to run rock the Gazlo here on Volskaya. That means the Hen gonna pick up the Brightwing. Valir was available, but the Hen played a very mean Brightwing last week in game number two. Gonna go with the Brightwing yet again here. And their second pick gonna come out with a Leork. Very early Leork pick. That's very interesting. Gonna be that either 
dual soaker or just a bruiser in that by lane, depending on how the side of deep fried Ming Balls want to force this map to go. But Leoric, typically not one of those that you see picked off early in the rotation, um, can be countered very easily if they don't go with the double bruiser, go with more of a bully that can be highly mobile and poke Leoric down from a safe range. Malfurion and Jaina being locked in. Sarah liking that Malfurion, going to be able to put people to sleep at level one. And Nova Bot doing wonderful things on Jaina. One of his comfort picks can put out a lot of damage really quickly on the Jaina. So... Let's see what we get in this second band phase. Looking at these two teams, we need some sort of heavy engage to land this wombo combo from the side of Wood League Express. But the side of full deep fried Ming Balls, they've got a lot of options available to combo that Leoric. They could throw in the Diablo. May is always an opportunity as well to really lock down people in that Leoric's pit. Um, and they still need to pick both of their uh, damage dealers here, knowing that there's no heavy shredding availability coming out of Woodlink Express. Sonya hasn't been picked or banned yet, so we could see a Sonya pick up from Deep Fry Ming Balls and go with like the Leoric, Sonya, and a tank with a hyper carry, kind of like a, a Rainer Gray main, something like that. Gaul actually getting banned. Don't want to see the Cho Gaul silliness coming out from the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. Tell him Orphea, tomorrow is my birthday. I demand it. Coming from Breath Lieutenant or Breathe Lieutenant or Breathe It. I don't know. Is that an I or an L? I'm going to say it's an I. Breathe It. But Kirk going to be on that Leo. And we're seeing it is going to be the Orphea. The w Breath's uh, wish is his command in this situation. Orphea going to be pulled out by Silver Arrow. At least that's who I'm assuming is going to be he wanted on the Orphea. But Orphea going to be able to put down a world of pain inside that tomb. Garrosh going to be able to be a very formidable exit uh, bouncer on the tomb. Nobody's going to be able to get past them. Otherwise, he'll just taunt them and keep them there. But we got to see what kind of engage that comes out. It is going to be that May, who will get shut down pretty easily by the Brightwing. It's tough to go with the Brightwing, but they do for the, for the Cassia. We have seen double mage comps come out from Wood League Express, but into a Brightwing, it's a little tougher to pull off with the double mage. Cassia going to be a nice supplement of burst damage to land on top of the Grav Bomb targets. They're going to be able to follow up and finish some of these kills with Jaina. PDX Badger coming in with a follow. Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for the follow. Enjoy your stay and get ready for some epic matches coming up this week and next week in the playoffs. But boom, there it is. Someone called it. I don't know who it is, but get that guy a drink. Somebody called out that that was going to be a swap between Mrs. So-and-so and the hand. Hand getting his Valera here. Didn't get banned away. Last picked as well. And here we go. We get to see the hand coming out on his bread and butter. Looking at these two teams, I mean, this is a very clear classic Wood League Express composition, something they've been running with the utmost success here in the recent weeks. Deep Fried Ming Balls, however, they've got a comp that I have been warned about, haven't seen in action quite yet, but have been warned that this is something Deep Fried Ming Balls loves to run around with, getting that Orpheal Leoric to do that in tomb with the Eternal Feast, and then Valia there to just clean up shop, get some plays rotating around the map. Holy moly, it's going to be a fun time coming out of these two teams, both going to be coming out with compositions that they've had a lot of success with so we'll see which titan falls here in game number one let's get the cheers coming out if you're a fan of wood league express let's get the choo-choo trains going if you want to see deep fried ming balls come out with game number one throw up your flair as well let's get these teams introduced on the blue side we have wood league express we got ice queen on cassia band-aid on the may high admiral sitting on that gaslo saraloth on that malfurion and nova bot Hiding in there on the Jaina somewhere. And here comes the train. On the side of deep red side, we got deep fried Ming Balls. We got Kirk on that Leoric. Mrs. So-and-so sitting on that Brightwing or Miss So-and-so. The Hen sitting on the Valir. Huli on the Garrosh and Silver Arrow in the back on the Orphea. 
Hopefully no Huli Trolly Dilemma this game. Yeah, he doesn't have a D.Va to throw into the enemy team this time, but already landing the throw onto the Gazlo. The Polymorph comes down immediately, but Gazlo going to be able to walk himself away. But look at that right away. Orphea gets the quest done and picks up the kill onto Jaina. What a kill coming out from the Orphea. Massive amount of damage there. Getting immediate value off of that growing nightmare there. Hits all three enemies. And now Valir coming in with the stun onto Malfurion. And look at the aggression coming out of Deep Fried Ming Balls. Two kills right out of the gates. You love to see it when they've got a composition like Orphea and Valera. You know, Silver Arrow loving to play those high burst mages can just be an absolute deal breaker for the opposing team. He cannot be allowed to get into this hyper carry position. Meanwhile, the Hen on the Valera going to be able to roam around in the shadows. Gets the stun onto the Gazla. Orphea is here to put down some hurt. Gets the Crushing Jaws unable to land the final auto attack to get the damage going down. But that is a lot of damage pushed down on to Wood League Express here. They're responding by trying to get up their camp. They're only about a half level lead down so far. But oh, Nova or sorry, Jana getting thrown. I'm assuming by the Garrosh coming down with the gank. Huli putting pressure in the bot lane. And Kirk getting a kill. This is a very good start coming out of the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls so far. Getting three kills and getting their camp as well. Wood League Express getting caught out a little bit here in the early game. They do have a scaling Cassia and a Jaina with a Gazlo. As long as they don't fall too far behind, they're really banking on getting level 10 and keeping it going. Valera putting down the pressure on High Admiral here in the top lane. Going to try and poke that down. Should have a pretty decent time as long as she can avoid a lot of these damage coming out from a uh, return damage from the Gazlo there. But yeah, man oh man, all we got to see, the, the thing in the back pocket for Wood League Express that they always have going for them on a map like Little Sky Foundry, we know it's going to go late. It's always going to come down to that third objective. 20s will probably get online. You know, very rarely does Volskaya end before level 20. So Wood League Express, they just got to be patient. Get their 10s, find a way, but they got to make sure they don't give up too much. And Valir getting the stun, the Polymorph coming down. Gazlo able to get himself away. Unstoppable pop by the Garrosh to get himself out of aggro range. Doesn't want to get slept by the Malfurion. And that will be the end of that. Team rotating down. See if they can get something on the May. May not going to be the target that they're looking for. Jaina starting to get some pressure here on the Leoric in the bot lane, pushing out this wave. But we do see both camps picked up and sieging in the top lane. Garrosh coming in for the play. Catches the Cassia. The stun coming out. Cassia's got to drop the turret. Doesn't. That is an item transfer going in favor of Deep Fried Ming Balls. Big pick up there. Getting the target they want to steal that turret away and a nice picks coming out of Huli here on the garage showing up here big time you wanted to make some redemption for that garage game I casted a while ago and doing a fantastic job at it We got the first objective coming online. About a half level lead still for the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. These early kills aren't doing a whole lot, but the support camp being picked up. High Admiral getting caught out by the Valera. It's so hard to be able to keep your eyes on that sneaky, sneaky Valera. Getting tucked in by the Garrosh. The damage being put down. Malfurion unfortunately cannot heal throughout that. Did land a nice four man sleep, but it just wasn't enough. The damage had already been done, but nobody picking up the objective yet. Everybody kind of rotating off to help with that kill. It's five to nothing in kills so far. Deep Fried Ming Balls coming in very good in game one. Strong showing by them so far. We'll see what the side of Woodley Express can do here with this first objective. Seven's now online for them. They will be able to start some sort of contestion, although the item advantage is definitely in favor of Deep Fried Ming Balls. They got to make sure that they don't commit too heavily and get baited in by those items. Nova getting caught out here on the Jaina. The throw and the second throw. Huli throwing two people. One an enemy and one an ally to get the kill secured onto the Jaina. And this looks like a potential camp invade coming out from the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. Without the Jaina burst damage this is going to have to be surrendered by the side of Woodling Express. Don't want to lose anything more. And this is the first protector picked up by the side of Deep fried Ming Balls. They will jump into this protector and start pushing on this mid lane. Looks like they're just going to take it straight to the top. Not electing to clear out the front fort there. Just want to go and make sure that they secure at least this health fountain. Going to take the protector with it. Shutting down one turret on the far side. Getting the second one down. Breaking down the wall as well. Protector down to about half HP. But Brightwing and Lior getting that soak in the offlane. So not a lot of resources being spent here by the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. 
Tens are online for them. Crushing or Eternal Feast coming in for the Orpheus. She does get rooted out here. A nice root and sleep, but unfortunately May just not quite in a position to go ahead and commit to that. And Tomb picked up by Lily Oric. We do see the Warlords taught by Garrosh. Brightwing going with the Blink Heal and Valyra going with that Smoke Bomb. Going to be able to get herself in that sneaky, sneaky Smoke Bomb and get herself to safety. And here we go. They have Tens. They know it's here. They don't quite get the Invade, but they may be able to get the kills. Cassie getting chucked away back into the enemy team. The Atum landing on to both the DPS players from Wood League Express. The counter engage is trying to be there, but Jaina and Cassia both falling here. Malfiri going to be that next prize, and that is three kills to none. Pick up by Deep Fried Ming Balls. Beautiful in Tomb coming out of the Leoric there, landing on both assassins on the side of Wood League Express, and they have to get themselves back. But as we said, even though it's a three level lead and it's starting to snowball, this is Volskaya. We are only one fort down and tens are about to come online in about a minute for the side of Wood League Express, and that is where their comp really starts to shine. They had a little bit of a rough time getting there, but we'll see if they can get their 10s before the 13s, if they can find that fight and get that comeback experience back in their favor. But right now, they've just got to keep their eyes on hand, try to keep him called out, figure out where he is on that Valera, and make sure that they don't get themselves caught out. We do have a pause coming in, so I'm going to throw it back over to the map screen real quick. <laughs> we got... Uh, what? Apparently, we may have a player who has a fire going on in their house. That would not be good. So... <laughs> We're going to see what's going on here. We're going to take a quick uh, a quick pause away from the game and talk a little bit. This gives me time to talk a little bit more about the uh, talents here. We've got the Jaina sitting at about a quarter, eh, a third of the way, almost done with that level one passive to get that ice, walk. She, ice block. She will be able to increase it even further. And she's going for this... Uh, Lingering Chill and then Arcane Intellect. So he will be able to get that mana up pretty high to get that 10% spell power. Going for the Ice Flows at 7 to help get a little broader damage. Going to get the cooldown reduction. House is smoky, but I'm good. Let's count it down and get back. It sounds like it's just an alarm. Maybe a little bit of smoke coming out. Don't know what's going on. Silver Arrow thinks that there's a bong going off. We'll see. Uh... Pretty pretty funny stuff going on in chat. But we've got readies coming out from both teams. Definitely good use of the pause function here. I am ready, but they can't see that I am ready. So they're just going to count it down. 3, 2, 1, and here we go. Back into the game here. Getting ready for the tens to come online for the side of Wood League Express. And now is the time where they will need to start coming back, finding those team fights, and figuring out a way to land this grab bomb ice ring combo, a ring of frost combo coming out from the Gazlo and the Jaina here. We'll see if the Jaina goes ring of frost. I expect her to. But Gazlo go for the grab bomb. Water Elemental actually picked up by the Jaina. Going to go for the more consistent damage. Ball Lightning picked up by the Cassia Twilight, by that Malfurion, and we've got the Avalanche picked up by the May. Not going with the Ice Wall, going for the Avalanche play to maybe set up a better Grab Bomb for the Gazlo there. Gonna be able to land it. It's gonna be an easy combo, but Grab Bam already being committed there. Doesn't land. Jaina getting caught in the Entomb, trying to get away. The Snowball actually pushing Leoric all the way back. Brightwing the first to fall. Good counter engage. They do pick up the Health Fountain. Gazlo drops it immediately, so as long as everybody stays in there, Garrosh getting low. Orpheus sitting fairly low as well. Nova coming back on the Jaina. This could be the fight that uh, Wood League Express are looking for. Huli very low, still holding on to the Health Fountain, but Brightwing got a little bit caught out there. The burst damage coming out of the Cassie was absolutely huge, and that is a pickup kill for the side of Wood League Express, getting a little bit of experience going back in their favor there. They didn't get the grab bomb that they wanted, but still found a way to get the kills. I thought Jaina was dead to rights with that water, uh, with that Entomb landing on her, but the follow-up damage just wasn't quite there and now we see this team fight potential coming out of the side of Wood League Express getting that kill and now we'll just wait for those ultimate timers to reset and they'll try and find that fight again. They definitely need to let them fully reset though. Malfurion and May still sitting on 30 seconds. Meanwhile, everybody up on the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. So we gotta, if Deep Fried Ming Balls are looking for a fight, 
13s and all ultimates. This small window is their time. The side of Wood League Express, if there ever is a talent tier to fight down, 13 is that talent tier to fight down. They only need really one kill, and they're trying to pick up this camp. Huli walking himself in, steps onto the point, lands a three-man Warlord Challenge. Orphea throwing down the Eternal Feast, and look at the damage being pumped out there. They will get the steal, but the balls will bounce. The Tomb coming out, landing huge. The uh, turret is dropped. Leoric getting very low, but it looks like, oh no, I think the Avalanche actually saved the Leoric there. The Avalanche looked like it had, or the kill looked like it had been secured onto the Leoric, but then he got wrapped up in a cozy little snowball and got sent away. It definitely was a good disengage, May dropping it to try and save everybody from that in Tomb, but it looked like Cassia may have been able to finish it off there, so we'll see, but the grab bomb still available, so Wood League Express may want to try and play around that one. Huli taking some some damage here. Gazelle trying to get into a position to find a pick with that grab bomb. And we got the Twilight Dream from Malfurion. So this combo still very much available by the side of Wood League Express. Huli going to look. Ooh, Twilight Dream actually popped there. Maybe looking for the uh, Valera, I'm guessing. But now everybody has to run. Possibly a misclick. Could have been a fat finger. But May going to have to disengage a tomb landing onto Bandit. Only Bandit. Grab bomb coming down, but unstoppable pop by the Leoric. So, you know, ultimate for ultimate there. Nothing really bit and burn. And Hen trying to jump in, but has to get himself to safety. And that is pretty much a nice scrap back and forth. Nobody dying, but this objective will go in favor of Deep Fried Mean Balls. With the Express, they have no way of contesting this now with the grab bomb being down. Going to go and try and get some camps, maybe add a little pressure in the bot lane. And so this will be second protector picked up by the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. Probably going to take it down into this bot lane. I'm curious if they'd push it in the top once they see this camp picked up. Not electing to. Going to go ahead and take the protector all the way to the bot lane. Valir just going to escort this thing down. Garrosh, Leoric, and Orphea already committing to clearing out the lane. And here we go, pushing it in. We're going to get the siege. We need Cassia and Jaina here to provide some damage onto the protector, especially since 16's quite aren't online. The sleep landing and the root onto the Garrosh as well. But but the protector here shutting down that fort, putting down the slaps, and going to do a significant amount of damage to this fort. This fort probably will not stay standing here. Everybody else going to try and push past the side of Woodling Express backing up to their keep. Going to try and make this a keep defense. Gazlo trying to just get that soak, find any sort of XP that he can get while the rest of the team safely cures. The Entomb going down, lands on the Malfurion. He can't get out. The Eternal Feast does come in with the kill. Malfurion loses his life for the defense. Gazlo is now here, though. The Protector is fairly low, and so we'll see if they elect to Siege to keep. Grab Bomb being popped does not land on the Leoric. This Leoric is timing those Unstoppables perfectly to get away from from the grab bomb and so that will be the end of the protector phase deep fried ming balls gonna back this one off and this is gonna give the side of wood league express another opening in a level and a half if they can find it right now their mod motto is sit back and soak don't get picked off by Belira. don't give up any more structures right now only being down two forts is a pretty good spot to be in on volskaya it could be a heck of a lot worse on most maps but volskaya a little more forgiving in that department as long as they get their soak, they're going to lose a couple of support camps here. Huli still holding on to that support item, the healing fountain. And now they're going to have two. Valera looking like she wants to set up the potential invade, but already the camp has been picked up. There is no invade to be had. Everybody going to back off. Actually, Leoric getting rooted out here. The damage being put down. The water elemental is popped by Jaina. Going to continue to try and get the rest of the damage onto Leoric, but Brightwing there, gonna be able to top him off that water elemental. Look at that fierce snowman throwing snowballs at that Orpheus. She's just a kid, leave her alone. Two man in tomb coming out onto the grab bomb. Huge grab bomb there, landing on the head. The taunt landing onto both the Gazlo and the May, but the return kill onto the Garrosh is there. The Eternal Feast is still feasting there. The support item being picked up, and it's a kill for another kill. Valera and May both fall, but both DPS alive on the side of Wood League Express. Malfurion, if he can get get them healthy again. That is two kills to one picked up by Wood League Express. 16s are online and now they are ready to find some fight on this map. They can be the aggressors knowing that they have the camp. Pretty good pickup coming out of Wood League Express here. The grab bomb finally coming in, getting two members there. Cassia putting down some serious pain and they were able to find that kill, uh, sleep sorry, onto the Garrosh to keep him under control and find a way to burst through it. 
So awesome play coming out. Wood League Express showing some signs of life here in the late game. The Valera, she got in there, was able to put down the damage, but the unfortunate side, Valera, it's sometimes really difficult to escape, especially when there's a lot of AoE burst on the side of Wood League Express there. The feast was feasting forever, though. Holy cow, Orpheus Eternal Feast, I think, got at least six or seven feasts off, if not more. So holy cow. That was insane. But we are getting the third protector phase come online. If Wood League Express can find one more fight in their favor before 20s, they will get that comeback experience. Malfurion sitting here, sees the Valir coming in, lands the root, gets the silence. No, he holds on to the silence. The two-man Entomb come out. Actually, it's a three-man. This is a big Entomb coming out. Malfurion going down. Cassie going down as well. Gets the last kill on the Orphea before she falls. Jaina trying to get some peel. Can she get the peel on the Valira? Nice root coming out from that 16 talent. Valira going to get the heal from the Brightwing phase shift. Jaina still very healthy can put down a lot of damage in both the health and the mana department as long as she keeps herself safe she'll still be able to put down a lot of pain and everybody on the side of deep fried mean balls recognizing that and backing themselves off i thought when malfurion caught the valera here he was going to use the silence and they were just going to fully commit to killing the valera they're only worried about the orphea for the follow-up damage but they elected to back off got the three man in tomb onto again both a dps there and that was an absolutely critical play for deep fried ming balls it gets them enough experience to get their 20s online and that means this protector is going to have to be given up by the side of wood league express if they can find a fort they can get some pressure onto this top fort and siege it down maybe pick up this support camp and they'd set up a solid defense in this bot lane they may still be able to hang on there they've got the first thing now they need to go get the support camp and then they just set up for defense but it looks like they're going to rotate down and potentially try and contest this down level 20 talent tiers I don't believe this protector ends in this bot lane with the keep still alive. If the keep was gone, I'd say you definitely need to go for the Hail Mary play. But they're electing to push the bot lane. They do have Brightwing. If they can find a way to catch Brightwing, Mr. So-and-so is backing off. But Jaina is in position. Can't she land the QE? Brightwing blinking herself to safety. Going to get herself away. Jaina not electing to pull it off there. And now we've got the support camp being stolen away, or I guess not stolen away, picked up by the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. The rest of Wood League Express going to go and try and get a tower, but this is exactly what Deep Fried Ming Balls want to find. They're coming in. They get the catch on to the Gazlo. He's getting absolutely crowd controlled and smashed. The bouncing balls are continuing there. The support item is dropped. That is a kill going down onto the Gazlo. And more importantly, they got a couple ultimates burned. So if they can get this final channel, they will be able to push the the protector in the bot keep with ultimates being down the rest of the side of Wood League Express trying to defend out the middle but the defense is going to be ultimately committed to this bot lane if they can stall for Gazlo I still think this protector does not end Jaina getting some soak in the top lane 19s online 20s not quite there but they should be able to get it after this protector phase if they commit to a solid defense here in this bot keep Gazlo still 15 seconds away so they got to poke they can give up the key as long as they do some damage what they can't afford is to get caught out by the Leoric and Tomb Leoric has it available and he is looking he's sitting in that position the protector is here the damage coming out from the Cassie and Jaina from safety should be enough as long as they keep their eye on the Leoric protector down to about 80% health Gaslow now in here and going to be able to put the root onto the Garrosh unstoppable is pop the war water elemental committed there and this is going to be a very not quite dead gas grab oh my gosh how did Garrosh survive and Cassia does get traded away a two-man avalanche is landed, but the Eternal Feast is still a feast and a plenty here. Garrosh getting rooted out. Will he be able to get into the Protector to keep himself alive? Novabot way behind enemy lines here. And the rest of the team trying to commit to this Protector defense. It is fairly low, so as long as they can get this Protector burned, and as long as Novabot can keep everybody in this back line, two-man knock-up and two-man toss by the Garrosh. That is a big, big play coming out of Garrosh. We do see the Jaina trying to finish off the Brightwing here. The Protector still online. Novabot trying to kite every Everybody away pick up there another kill but may committing to the defense nobody's in the protector as long as band-aid can survive again they 
may be able to defend this. Band-Aid's alive. Novabot keeping everybody back. The shield as now burnt. We'll see if Novabot can get to this defense. Hen is burning it by himself. May is alive again, but then Tomb does miss. Brightwing is being popped to the phase shift. Cassio will be up in five seconds. Stace is being popped by the Jaina. Everything's just so spread out right now. Huli taking damage from the keep. 60% on the core. Jaina finally gets thrown in, but Cassia is back. The water elemental still burning. Balls are bouncing. The core down to 36. The pick onto Garrosh and now onto Orphea. And here comes the defense out of Woodling Express. May committing all the way in. Valera and Lurik looking like they want to get in behind, but Cassia says, no can do. I'm going to come back and fight you. And everybody now on the run from the side of Deep Fried Bing Balls. Maybe not. Lurik turning this one around. We do have the Malfurion alive, so Cassia goes down. But now we have a Malfurion and a Gazlo coming back. So that is a defense from the side of Wood League Express. Holy cow, that just kept going. I mean, Novabot was sitting so far back on the Jaina, and they were just, the side of Deep Fried Mean Balls didn't commit one way or the other. It wasn't a full core call. It wasn't a let's just go kill the Jaina. It was just this back and forth nonstop that they were trying to decide, do we kill the Jaina? Do we kill the core? Do we kill the Jaina? Do we kill the core? Like, which one are we going to commit to here? And May was able to heal herself off and come up with the defense. So big play coming out of Wood League Express. Nice stall there. But Deep Fried Ming Balls, they do have backdoor potential at any time. They've got to keep everybody on the side of Wood League Express, or on Deep Fried Ming Balls in their sights. Leoric all the way out here. We could see a potential collapse, but Leoric will be able to get himself away. This could be a fight over the support camp. We do have Jaina online, and Novabot did some serious work in that last fight. Let's see if she could do it again. The tomb does not land, but we got a polymorph Gazel right in the middle. He sounds the grab bomb coming down. Oh, unfortunate timing. It's a huge, huge avalanche. Jaina will be able to commit to it, but she snowballed everybody out of the grab bomb. Jaina's still getting one, trying to get the second kill onto the garage. Cassie is now coming in. May wants to find the second kill. Orphea in a little bit of an overextended position here, so she should be punished for that. Cassia goes down. May actually going down as well, so it does turn in to a three for two victory for the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls, but man, oh man. I mean, I, again, it just seems like the the con communication wasn't quite there. Grab bomb was absolutely coming in huge, or maybe May just was like, "I'm waiting for the grab bomb. I'm waiting." But there's the stun. There was the silence onto the Gazlo. So he's like, "I can't press the button yet." And ultimately, she throws the avalanche down right when the grab bomb comes down. So knocking everybody out. That would have been a five-man grab bomb there, and Jaina would have mopped it up. Unfortunately, she got four in the avalanche, so Jaina still had a pretty good time, but Jaina had already committed some of the skills to the grab bomb, and so she didn't have her full rotation available to really make everybody suffer there. But again, we're resetting buttons. Everybody's online. We're in the late game. It always goes past 20 on Volskaya, and now we're going to see a big, big fight over this mid-objective. Items are pretty much... Even Steven, no items on either side so far. I'm checking the Malfurion. Yeah, no items for either team so far. We've got a turret camp coming up in 14 seconds and 28 seconds. So we may have one turret camp apiece. The support camp only at a minute 34. So we'll see if teams elect to go for the items or if they just decide to straight up duke it out one more time. And it looks like the fight is on. Leoric looking for that in Tomb. Finds it onto the Jane and the Gazlo. Two great targets with that silence. Grab bomb being put down. Catches two. Two. Orphe and Valir are both caught in that grab bomb. They're trying to run away. May is chasing one. Everybody else is chasing the other. They do find the kill on the Leoric. Jaina somehow lived through all of that, and they do find a kill around. So two kills coming in for Wood League Express here. Valira barely getting herself away, and that is another big pickup on the side of Wood League Express. Now going to go get the reward, and they, if they can get this protector, this protector going to be a very scary thing to deal with. They're not going to probably go core, but they'll be able to get through this bot lane and get probably this keep in the bot lane as well. We'll see. Leoric is getting the scouting. Jaina going to go respond to these minions in the top lane, so they got to be aware. Jaina's got to push this out quickly and get to deal with these minions in the bot lane. The rest of the team going to go pick up the turret camp, but this is going to be a two-item advantage coming out for the side of Wood League Express. They can back themselves off, let May be the one to just kind of hold the position while they wait for Jaina. Jaina now rotating herself down. It is a 5v4, so Wood League Express want to pick this fight. If they can find the engage, May wants to 
go find it. Gazlo wants to go find it. Unfortunately, not able to, but the Protector is picked up. The core getting fairly low. These siege minions were never cleared by Jaina. Somebody's got to go back. It looks like Jaina is recalling there, but the siege minions still hitting 26, 22, 18, 14, 10. Jaina here, 6, 2. Oh, it's at 2, but everybody's on their way. The backdoor call is here. Jaina has to stall for the shield. Everybody else has got to run back. Jaina goes down. The shield is regening, and that is going to be game one going over to Deep Fried Ming Balls. Holy cow. Like, I thought Jaina was going to go clear that off. Everybody had the time to just back off, let Jaina clear the minion waves off really quickly, and then get to the fight. They didn't. If they were committing to the fight, they had to commit to the 5v4. Like, just May, Gazlo, full steam ahead, try and fight, force the fight there. But they didn't. They kind of just stood on the objective, and they let those siege minions push in in the bot lane. And so that created the final push that needed from Deep Fried Ming Balls. But look at the damage coming out. 110,000 from... From the Orpheus Silver Arrow putting on a show there. Valera only coming away with 40k, but it was the the scary presence that was coming out of Valera there. Everybody had to worry where the heck Valera was, and that made it absolutely devastating to deal with. Jaina Nova Bot coming in big once she got to that 20, that 16 20 range, got the root at 16, got the winter mute at level 20, was able to create plays and cause delays for the late game, but unfortunately just didn't get herself down to clear those minions out, and that allowed the rest of the, the, the rest of Deep Fried Ming Balls to get in there, but I mean, that that entire game was just a couple of missed combinations from Wood League Express from completely flipping on its head in the late game there. They definitely were coming back with the stronger team fight, which is expected with the Valera pick. I mean, Valera is going to make plays all throughout the early and mid game, but doesn't have as much value in the late game. Meanwhile, Volskaya always goes late. So as long as we saw Woodley Express just said, let's wait, let's get to late. They were coming back and they were winning these fights in the late game. They just took a little too much damage that they had to get, you know, dig themselves out from a 10 foot hole and only made it seven feet up before they slid back down. So good attempt from Wood League Express. Definitely excited for what we got coming in game number two, looking at some of these talents real quick. Eldritch Rams <laughs> popping in the take a drink, man. I will absolutely do that real quick. You guys can look at the talents. I'm going to take a sip of water and then get back. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. I took one and I took the second one because of Fizz X Wiz. And now we got Breathe It coming in with a third take it drink, man. So I got to go do another drink. Holy cow. All right, hold on. One more drink. Whew. All right, there we go. Thirst quenched for sure. Three drinks. Thank you all so much for making sure this caster stays hydrated. Let's look at some of these talents coming through. I mean, for the most part, I really like the Jaina build. I actually am curious about the level 1 and level 13 uh, abilities. I, I kind of like it. She gets a little bit more shield, so it's going to allow her to last a little bit longer about the, uh, against the potential Valera pick coming in here. Uh, and then the level one, she gets that increased chill duration to just create a little bit more people. Oh my gosh, you guys. Healer and Soul House both coming in with two more drinks. All right, hold on. Let me get two more drinks real quick. All right, there you go. Two more drinks down the hatch. You guys are awesome there. Uh, Orphea, I mean, Orphea instantly getting that value out of the Growing Nightmare at level one, getting that increased damage, which she could put down on any Leoric and Tomb. So that was, that was absolutely huge, being able to finish that off right away. And, uh, you know, pretty standard stuff coming out for the rest of the game. Maestro, no face cam. How do I know you really took a drink? Uh, thanks, Breathe. I'm an honorable fellow. Absolutely, I took it. I So for everybody out there, the face cam is coming. I'm waiting until we get uh, our new house and get moved in there before I start casting with the actual face cam. So that probably won't come until next season, maybe as a special surprise if it 
everything works out a little bit faster, I might be able to pull it up like come finals of playoffs. So maybe that'll be like season 11 final surprise. You all get to see my awful face finally uh, and see how actually animated i am my wife just goes crazy she walks behind me and she's like stop throwing your hands around all over the place i'm like i can't i'm so excited i look like one of those inflatable dudes um but that is going to be coming once we get moved into our new house i'll get that all set up get a third room so i can kind of be off in seclusion and not you know you don't see this little three-year-old running around in the background all the time as much as you probably would love to see a little three-year-old running around in the back background uh definitely don't need that on the stream so we'll get that all figured out it's coming pending but until then you're just gonna have to take my word that i am making sure i stay very well hydrated and silver arrow coming in he's like dude you're casting my own game and i was like needing some drinks after that game so you might as well get one as well so let me get silver arrows drink redeemed real fast All right, I'm going to have to go fill up this water bottle. You guys are going to have to give me a second. I'm like almost empty. It's literally left over from when I was at work. But thank you all so much. I'm getting the invite for game number two. So let's get you guys back over to the maps. I know where we're going. I don't know who picked it. Knowing the map that came out, I have a feeling who picked it. But uh, we'll get in there. So actually, I have to change this. That first map was picked up by Deep Fried Ming Balls. And we're going to Alteric Pass and it was, oh, look, I'm on the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. I'm on their team, guys. Uh, nope. Yep. So first pick is going over to the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. That means Alteric Pass was picked up by none other than Wood League Express, who I absolutely expected to pick this one. Oh, my gosh. More drinks coming in from Hellraiser. Okay, hold on. I'm going to put the mic down real quick while we wait for this game. I got to go refill my water bottle, so hold on. All right, I don't know if you guys can hear that. That's my water bottle, it's filled up. That's the cap coming off. So now you guys know I'm not fooling around. The cap did come off, I am drinking this water. I had to go refill it. I would do like the cartoony uh, gulp, but uh, you know, didn't didn't feel the need to. You guys are gonna make me, like if this goes to a game three, I'm gonna have to pee between, between game two and three with how much water you guys are making me drink right now. But we've got readies coming out from both teams. <laughs> you can join the fan club if you want. Signups close this week. Uh, but yeah, we've got readies coming out from both these teams. This is a deep fried Ming Ball special. Or sorry, Wood League Express special. I don't know. I'm mixing these two teams. This is a Wood League Express special. They have some pretty crazy comps. And they've had a lot of success on this map lately. So I expect Wood League Express to come out with a similar plan. We'll see if the side of deep fried Ming Balls have done their homework to double check and make sure they know what Wood League Express typically likes to run on a map like like Alteric Pass, and we will make sure that uh, Valera doesn't go over to the um, Hen again, because that was that was absolutely scary. And a map like Alteric Pass can be scary again. Grog Malblood, Grog Malblood, Malblood, Grog Malblood. Take a drink, man. All right, here's another drink. I swear you guys are gonna make me pee. But uh, drink verified, drink secure. We get a Malfurion ban coming out, so Deep Fried Ming Balls not wanting to see the Malfurion come out in another game. Malfurion was getting, uh, Saraloth getting some serious value with those roots and sleeps there in game number one. Definitely was putting down the silences with the Twilight, so not wanting to see it, and it's one of the champions they like to run on a map like Alteric Pass. Mephisto being banned out again. Don't want to see Arrow coming out on the Mephisto. So that is getting absolutely deleted from the map. Malganis, one of the champions, again, that Wood League Express have found a lot of success on, on Alteric Pass, is getting banned out here by Deep Fried Ming Balls. And the final ban going to come in. Are we going to see the Valera ban? Are we going to see a Brightwing ban? So many decisions to be made on the side of Wood League Express. Thinking about it, but it's going to be the Garrosh this time. So don't want to see Huli on the Garrosh. Guys, don't you know the way to counter Huli's Garrosh is to pick Diva. 
That is the way you counter Garrosh when it's Huli on the Garrosh. But Huli had an excellent game on that Garrosh in the last game. But that means Huli gets his Gazlo as a first pick. Doesn't even hesitate. Instantly locks it up there. And Huli going to put on a show with the Gazlo here in game number two. But that leaves a lot of picks available. We've got Falstad still available. Bright Wings available. They do have Jaina again if we want to see Nova Bot run it back on the Jaina, which is one of his comfort picks. Bright Wings picked up first here by Sarah Loth and the second pick going to be that Johanna so substituting out the Malganis for the Johanna holding on to their assassins and that offlaner until the second pick phase and now we'll see what comes out from the side of deep fried Ming Balls. Are we going to see the Orphea again with the Gazlo? We could see like an Orphea ETC here. Johanna and Brightwing, pretty heavy ETC counter, so maybe not the ETC necessarily, but some other heavy lockdown champ variant with the Taunt. Going to be one of those ones. And Silver Arrow going to pick up the Li Ming instead. Going to be able to put down a lot of burst damage onto whatever target the Hen wants taunted. And now we get to the second ban phases. Is the Stukov going to get banned? I fully expect let's get rid of that Stukov. Don't let, we got Elixir subbing in for uh, Mrs. So -and -so, or Miss So-and-so here. So I expect the Stukov ban to come out. And there it is. Don't want to see those shenanigans. That variant Stukov combination is very, very terrifying. It could be, we could see a May for Elixir. But that would mean this is going to be like a Twin Blades variant, and they already have a Gazlo show. Murky being banned out here. I did forget that the side of Woodley Express did pull out a Mercury, Murky with High Admiral and won it. So uh, there we go. But, I mean, Silver Arrow, he has to play Leeming at least once per series. It's in the name. So they've got to play Leeming at least once. Waiting on those second picks. Chromie picked up and the Zool. So the Chromie is a pretty standard pickup for Woodling Express on Alteric Pass. And we'll see if that Jaina is going to be that final pickup. Zool going to go up against Gazlo in the offlane. Cassia picked up by Sill. And they're waiting to see what healer they're going to pair with it. Is this going to be the, the Lucio? Okay. So... Well, I expect with Novabot not picking up, we're going to see the double mage come out. They love this double mage comp. I didn't want to say too much about it before, but they really like to see this double mage. They do have the Lucio to give the sound barrier for the extra burst damage support. But this, aside from the Johanna, this is a pretty standard, oh, I guess the Brightwing too. They don't typically run Brightwing with this comp. So see if he does go with the Jaina or if they're just going to flex off it and do something else. And they do. They go with the Tychus instead. So they kind of didn't get all the pieces to that puzzle. So they didn't want to commit to the double mage. Going to go with the Tychus and the Chromie here instead. Tychus... He's going to be able to put out some damage. He's definitely going to be able to, um, you know, get out of the grab bomb with the unstoppable uh, and is going to be able to poke down pretty well from range. But there's no heavy, heavy tank coming out from the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. And Varian, once he gets to level 10, will just be able to parry that minigun and pretty much negate a lot of the damage coming out. So drafts completed. Game number two in progress getting it created we have some pretty standard stuff coming out from both these teams again comfort picks huli on the gazlo silver arrow on that Li Ming. definitely two shining gems that i saw last week meanwhile the chromie and the uh really the chromie and the johanna for to an extent from woodley express but they typically like to run a little different comp so i'm going to be interested to see how woodley express decide to play this one out and how much success they have on alteric pass with the comp they're not the most that they're not the most known for, I guess I could say. But let's get these teams introduced on the blue side. We've got Ice Queen sitting on that Chromie. Band-Aid on that Johanna. Saraloth on that Brightwing. We got Novabot on the Tychus in the top lane. And in the bot lane, we've got High Admiral on the Zool. Meanwhile, on the red side, we've got your deep fried Ming balls. We got Huli on the Gazlo. Sill dancing away. Sill sitting on that. I believe it's Cassia. Elixir on the Lucio. The Hen on Varian. And Silver Arrow sitting on Li Ming. And looking at these pickups, Johanna going for that extra sustainability. Going to get those Laws of Hope. Get herself healed up just a little bit more. Chromie going to get that extra vision to see where some of these rotations may come in from the Varian. Wants to keep eyes on him at all times. Tyke is actually going for the extra dash uh, for his E, that running gun. Going to get himself a little safe, uh, 
little more safe against a taunt variant potential, but uh, variant committing to the lion's maw early. So I will expect this to be a taunt with just a lot of follow-up burst damage on top of it. Cassia actually going for the charge strikes here. Uh, instead of that infinitely stacking Q build. So she will be able to put down a little bit less damage as the game scales, but she'll have a little more early game pressure here. <laughs> All right, we got Moshi, 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 Moshi Mochi coming in. I missed you, man. Welcome back. Coming in to give some shout outs for Wood League Express. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to the channel. We've got both teams starting their camps off, getting them going. You know, that is the key to success on Alteric Pass, making sure you get those camps on a Tyner and continually picking them up. I've seen both teams play this map. I know both teams are very excellent at getting these camps as often as they can. Definitely favoring the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. They have the better camp clear. Chromie not going to be able to pick them up as fast as a Cassia. But we do see Sylv getting some sand thrown on Cassia's head here. Actually, that's not really sand. I don't know what this is from Chromie. It's like computer generated sand. CGI sand coming out of the Chromie there. Dumping it on their head and we got to see if this siege is going to start pushing in favor of Wood League Express. Force online for them. Deep fried Ming Balls a titch behind but that means Varian is going to get that taunt and now going to be an absolute menace to deal with. Varian is online. He's no longer an AI bot. He is now a scary scary man to deal with here and as long as they pair him up with the Li Ming that is a lot of burst damage going down onto some squishy squishy targets in the Chromie and the Tychus. Nice little gentleman's duel down here in the bot lane, both electing to just get the soak and then back each other off. And we have the channels coming in for both teams. Objective online, 25 seconds here. Cassia and Zul just duking it back and forth, but Zul awfully low in the mana pool, so going to have to back before any big fights start to take place here over this objective. Techno Sand is what's being called out by Moshi. We got a Techno Sand coming out of the Chromie, not CGI Sand. I like that so much better. Pocket Sand Shazam. <laughs> what in the world? I'm sad. I, 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 it's kind of weird that I could read that really quickly, actually with all of those crazy uh, glyphs going on around. I could somehow read through all of that. But we do see the objective already picked up again by Deep Fry Mean Balls. The side of Wood League Express actually picking it up fairly quickly on their own end as well. So both teams getting that second camp timer there. Tychus and Lucio still both committing to this top lane, but Lucio being in the top lane is the interesting decision. That means no healer down here, so Chromie can just continue to poke away. As long as she can hit these Qs, Lucio is not going to be here to heal everybody up. But we do see the Zul now starting to rotate in. Going to be a little late to the party. Johanna sitting in the... So the channel does go off. That means objective timer started. Polymorph landing onto that Varian. Huli getting some damage put down from the Johanna as well. The channel's going off, but the interrupt did not land onto the Zul. Only onto the Chromie. And that means the objective has been stalled out here in level... With only 8 seconds really channeled there. I have wizard eyes. I wish I had wizard eyes. That'd be so cool. But we do see the pressure going on into the variant in the top lane. We do see the grasping bone prism coming out, but it does not get this variant. Variant so, so tanky. Not going to be caught out here. And now we see full five members here for Wood League Express. Gazlo's getting a little bit of soak. Will be able to get himself in. And now Varian's looking to see if he can find one of those juicy targets in the Chromie on the right wing. Running right past. Finds a Chromie, but a beautifully timed Polymorph. Make sure Varian doesn't land that taunt. Tychus gets stunned out there and is able to return some focus fire. Brightwing landing the phase shift, topping Tychus off. Everybody grouped up for Li Ming, so Li Ming landing some big combos here, and Brightwing has to get herself to safety. So it's a beautifully timed Polymorph coming in from the Brightwing to make sure that no taunt was able to be followed up there. Good time stop by the Chromie. Can't she keep everybody off? She is, but she's electing to push the sands away instead of up along the lines. Still getting interrupted as well. Trying to get the channel off, but everybody's interrupting it. Now the channel does go down. Varian not landing the taunt onto the Tychus. We got Got a Johanna sitting fairly low. The taunt landing onto the Zul. Zul having to get himself away. Chromie still continuing to drop that Techno Sand, Pocket Sand, on top of everybody else. The Sands are here now. The Slow's there. Root coming out onto the Li Ming. The damage wasn't quite there. Tyke is trying to finish it off. Turns around onto the Varian. Gets the kill there. The 
reset came in for Li Ming, but Arrow has to get himself to safety very low in the mana and the health. Big win coming out for Wood League Express. Now they are the aggressors and getting the channels going here. We'll see if the side of Wood League Express, or sorry, Deep Fried Ming Balls elect to come in, but Chromie gets those sands down, doing a little bit of a duel in the back with the Gazlo. Everybody else trying to keep this Li Ming from coming in. As long as they can keep the Li Ming poked down, they should be in a pretty successful spot, but getting about 18 seconds channeled off, a 12 to 12 duel, and now the defense being set up again for the side of Wood League Express. Chromie going to be able to zone everybody off with that pocket sand, but the stun going to land onto the Brightwing. Unfortunately, Zul stepped in front, so that means Brightwing stays fully healthy here. Band-Aid looking for a counter engage onto the Varian. Tychus putting down some damage, but unfortunately getting poked out by this Gazlo and Leeming. Leeming in just excellent position. You're keeping yourself away from the Johanna and finding ways to land more orbs, and Cassia is now putting down the damage. A taunt landing onto the Zul. Reset for Li Ming, and now she's looking to be on the aggression here. Chromie's got to find some way to get some burst down onto this Li Ming to turn this fight around. Tychus is there. starts getting the minigun, but doesn't land the follow-up damage, and so that means this first objective looks like it's going to go over to Deep Fried Ming Balls. And they get a nice push here in the top lane as well. So that's going to be a lot of experience denied. Willie Express trying to get some consolation prize. Finish off this camp to get a third camp picked up and even out some of this experience. Two to one in kills right now. And now they need to just spread themselves out, go soak up their tens, and play for the next objective. Got a lot going on in the chat. Karaoke and uh, Alkadir, thank you both so much for the follows. Definitely appreciate it. Welcome to the channel. I hope you enjoy a lot of HOTS action because we are in week number 10. Playoffs are just around the corner, and that's when it really gets fun on this channel. We have a good time casting playoffs, but let's get back to this game. We've got a four-man siege being started up here in the bot lane for Deep Fried Ming Balls. Three members committed from the side of Wood League Express. Chromie already clearing out what's going on in the mid lane, so she's going to go down and try and at least help clear some of this out. This fort will not be saved, but Zool going to save the top fort as well, so only one for it being picked up by the side of Deep Fried Ming Ball. So a good defense coming out of Wood League Express. One for it, not necessarily the worst thing to lose on Alteric Pass. You got to kind of siege all three lanes to get the uh, core to lose all of its protective armor there when the keeps fall. So first objective, not necessarily the end of the world. We do see a rotation coming up onto the Zul in the top lane. Zul sniffing it out, saying, absolutely no way I'm getting caught out here. Tens are online for both teams. Let's go over those real quick. We have the Skeletal Mages picked up by the Zul. We've got the uh, Drill coming out from the Tychus there as well. The Sands we see coming out from the Kroby. Blink Heal by the Brightwing. And we've got the Blessed Shield being picked up by that Johanna. Meanwhile, on the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls, Li Ming going with a Disintegrate Great. We got the charge increase coming out from the Varian there. We've got the grab bomb from the Gazlo, the bouncing balls from the Cassia, and we do have a sound barrier coming out from the Lucio. Not worried about, you know, not a ton of CC. There is the, the bone prism coming out from the Zul that they potentially have to worry about and the Johanna Blessed Shield. But outside of that, not a ton of CC that they need the high five for. So sound barrier going to get a little bit more value. But Zul got to be careful. The rotation's coming up. Varian is here. He sees the Zul with no mana. It lands the top. Brightwing coming in to get the heal. Both members are here now. Can they delay? Brightwing getting herself to safety. Dodges the Lee Ming orb and gets the blink heal. Huge play coming in from Saraloth there to make sure that Zul gets away to safety. Meanwhile, Tyke is able to get some soak here in the bot lane. I don't think he's going to... Maybe he's going to drop the drill and try to do this. I don't know. I doubt it. Two more members rotating down. Are they going to do this? Tychus is starting it up. Tychus not one of the fastest boss clearers. Neither is Johanna. Chromie gets a little bit, but the drill is now committed. And they are going to shred this boss a little bit faster. Sneaky, sneaky play coming out from Wood League Express here. Deep Fry Ming Balls not scouting it out. Not going to go get the top boss in return. They had to clear the minions in the midway. So this is going to be a big pickup in the bot lane for Wood League Express. Getting some macro presence for themselves. And they're going to get this lane pushing in their favor. This boss is going to pick up this fort no problem at all. The rest of the team now rotating up to go play around the objective. Everybody on Deep Fry 
fried Ming Ball sounding the retreat. Zul looks like he's going to try and channel this. I thought he was going to go over and just start clearing and get the channel link going in their favor, but everybody else getting the channel and looks like they're just rotating up to go get the top boss as well. Deep fried Ming Balls having to clear out the bot boss. They're going to save the bot for it. Now everybody's starting to leave to go up. And remember, the drill, drill has already been dropped, so the boss going to fall a little bit slower here. It's going to give time down to about half health. Everybody's at the midway point, so it's going to be very close. Lucio already getting his way in, but I think this is going to be a second objective picked up by the side of Woodley Express. The Skeletal Mage just popped preemptively. Hen is here, but the objective picked up. Sound Barrier also popped. That's a big cooldown being burnt by the Lucio, so this boss did actually pick up that fort, got a little more siege, and now they have to clear up the top lane siege as well, and then Gage is on. Woodley Express are all committed here. Gazel getting rooted. The ground bomb going down, catches two members there, but the Blessed Shield in return catches the Gazlo. The Hen getting stunned out. Boss getting an assist with the stun. Two members stunned out. The Varian falls. Cassia got stunned as well, but Leeming able to pick up the kill on the Tychus, halting any further progression of this kill. So two for one in favor of Woodley Express. They're going to go and try and channel this thing off. Leeming was able to find the snipe. Big play there to make sure that it wasn't all for naught. And now Leeming going to try and just poke everybody off the channel. But Saraloth getting it finished off. Gazbomb our Gazlo will be back, as will the variants for the defense. So as long as they don't lose anybody, we do see the Polymorph Cassia getting rooted out here. Chromie getting way far ahead, now backing herself off there. The Sands popped out, but now everybody's got to retreat. Johanna, she should have the Iron Skin to get herself to safety there. Li Ming on the hunt. She thinks that there is no Iron Skin to be popped. Lucio coming in, gets Polymorph, and everybody on the run. Lucio actually taking quite a bit of damage here. Grav Bomb is available for the Gazlo now, so we'll see if they end up trying to pick a fight around those objectives being burnt but this bot lane is continuing to push. Meanwhile, Woodley Express going to try and set up a defense. Maybe sneak the Chromie over here to try and get a camp. Deep Fried Ming Balls are trying to get their own camp, but this is the first lead we see for Woodley Express. Well, now negated since the Ming went and cashed in on this bot lane, but Woodley Express had the lead for a little bit, but they're going to go pick up the objective instead. Going to go for the second objective rather than the camp. Camp is picked up by the side. Li Ming is not here, so if they can find a fight around the Li Ming being absent, Skeletal Mages are popped. Gazlo Hone the grab bomb, Blessed Shield being committed, Sound Barrier popped, and the grab bomb catches nobody. So big play for Wood League Express getting out of that one. And now the counter engage is on. The bouncing balls only landing onto one member, however. We do see the Zul going down. Five seconds remain. Brightwing has to get himself away. Four seconds, but it doesn't look like the interrupt is going to be able to get completed. Lee Ming still on the hunt. Silver Arrow wanting to find a third reset there, but everybody's got to back up and deal with these minions. It was super close for Wood League Express, but Deep Fried Ming Balls played that around perfectly. We're we're able to find the delay and now are going to get rewarded with their objective as well. I think, well, it's Brightwing, so maybe if Zul can get here or they can delay for the Zul they, with the Chromie, they may be able to contest this, but no, too many members are too low. Band-Aid's got to go all the way back and get healed up. So it's going to be another defense coming out of Wood League Express, but lanes are pushed out in the bot lane and in the top lane. It's going to go down as well. So this should be Deep Fried Ming Balls picking up their third fort, and then the keep siege will begin. But it looks like they're actually committing to the keep here in the mid lane. Brightwing is available. The 5v5 is here. 16's online. 15's still there for Wood League Express. They need a little bit more experience, and then it'll be full 16's full steam ahead. Maybe they'll go out and clear this top fort to uh, prevent the objective from getting any value. Gazlo actually alone. If they see the Gazlo, they may try and pull the trigger on this with the Johanna there. Now we see a full man rotation. 16's online for both teams. Kroby setting down the sands, and now it looks like we're going to see if there's going to be a fight over this top fort. Gazlo setting up the siege. Li Ming just poking it away. Very, or sorry, the Johanna going in. Blessed Shield used as a disengage. The Skeletal Mage just popped the drill in a very aggressive position. Grab Bomb does not land. They're trying to find the Li Ming. Tychus and Zul on the hunt, but the taunt coming down onto the Tychus in the back line. Saraloth is here to provide some sort of healing. Everybody's fighting, so the objective is getting massive value here. Nobody has fallen yet. There, Zul does go down. That means resets for Li Ming, and she gets a second kill. Will she be able to get herself in a good enough position to find the third? She's looking for the Bright Wing. Will not find it. Objective stalled in this mid lane. Bot lane still pushing in very heavily and everybody on Deep Fried Ming Balls pushing in, in the top lane. So big pickup by Deep Fried Ming Balls here. Huli actually getting very low. Will he fall? Lucio's here. He gets the boop to keep his own gas low safe. Mid keep is getting sieged up. Ice Queen now here on the Chromie to try and stall this one out. The objective getting sieged out in the bot lane as well. So these are going to be two very unhealthy keeps. 
that have to be defended by only three members, they actually may lose the bot keep completely here. And that is going to be a bot keep and the siege going into the mid keep. So that fight ended up costing Woodley Express massively. They did commit to the fight, but weren't able to find any kills there. And that means they lost both of their keeps instead of playing for the defense game around the objective. So big, big power play coming out for deep fried Ming balls there. So now if you're with League Express, now you know that this boss is online, but you've got to find some way. Maybe find the fight here. 20s aren't online. You know the boss is there. you got to find some sort of fight in your team's favor to get yourself map pressure back. And it looks like that's what they're going to do. The bot is being channeled here. We do see Johanna coming in. This could be the fight. This is going to be for all the marbles here. Li Ming putting down the disintegrate. The zone is coming off. The iron skin is popped. Captain Hen getting very low, but a grab bomb laying onto two members. Boss is still alive. Varian is first to fall there, but Chromie getting return killed. The objective is channeled. Zul does fall. Li Ming able to get the reset. And now the siege is on everybody pushing up for the side of deep fried Ming balls. Nobody, uh, Chromie did fall in that fight, so they're going to have very low clear potential for this boss, but they do still have one armor left. I thought we would see a potential four-man push, but maybe with a grab bomb down and the variant not being alive, they're going to elect to just go and get another boss and then play for the objective here. Holy cow, though. 20's about to be on line for the side of Deep Fried Ming Balls. That is going to be a big, big power play. The good news about this boss, it regens to full health. So as long as they get this boss pretty full cleared out that the uh, core can finish him off, they can go ahead and go ahead and start working on this boss that's going to be coming down here in the top lane. So boss being cleared out here in the bot lane. Everybody else going to go ahead and commit to this top boss. But this is actually giving Deep Fried Ming Balls, it, or sorry, Woodling Express, if they can get this camp here, a little bit of time to see if they can get their 20s online and find one last defense over this objective. It is a 50-second objective channel. Brightwing is the only one committing to the defense. They need to send Chromie up there so Chromie can help clear it out. They have 50 seconds, so they have plenty of time to get down to this objective. I don't believe they will have their 20s online, but if they can find a pick, one pick, they may be able to get that 20s with the comeback experience. And here we go. Coming in here into the objective. We have the full five on five. They're looking for the pick grab bomb, only landing onto the Zul. It pops the bones immediately. Saraloth getting himself away, but the rest of the team tried to pick a fight. They do get the kill on the Gazlo. The Li Ming does get the uh, response uh, reset there. The balls are bouncing there. High Admiral does go down on that Zul, but we got a two for two. Now it's a three, sorry, it's a three for a one. That means that Johanna is going to go down. Tychus doing everything he can to get the kill, but it's going to be unfortunate. The objective is picked up here. Five men white for deep fried Ming balls, and they are going to go ahead and push in this mid lane. It was a valiant effort from Wood League Express. We definitely saw that they had the potential, but Deep Fried Ming Balls, they came in with a plan. They got the picks that they wanted. They were able to de de deny Wood League Express some of the champions that they seem to have a favor, you know, putting them on a different composition than they typically like to run on Alteric Pass. And Wood League Express still making a good effort here in this game, but Deep Fried Ming Balls coming up big in this game series, taking away the 2-0 victory securing their number one seed. I believe the number one seed was actually already secured, but going to get themselves in a nice, nice little experience against what may potentially end up being the final match here in Division E West when we get to those playoffs. We could see these two teams duking that out again here in two weeks' time. Looking at some of these stats real quick. I mean, Silver Arrow putting out just a massive amount of damage on that Li Ming, constantly getting the resets, did a fantastic job playing around the Varian taunts there and finding a way to reposition himself, get away from the Johanna, and then committing to trying to find these angles to hit the Chromie, to hit the Tychus, hit the Brightwing, and was getting some resets. Huli 
Getting a couple grab bombs, missing a couple as well, but definitely still putting out a very consistent Gazlo appearance. Lot top siege damage, top experience soaked, even top healing, uh, self healing done as well. So definitely putting out a respectable Gazlo performance there. Putting out quite a bit of damage. Cassia not putting out the most damage, but her damage stuck when it hit. Meanwhile, Chromie. Getting some of that siege damage, but Tyke is actually coming away with the top siege damage. I thought with the double boss objective and two kill power play, they may have had a chance. But uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how it ends up turning out here in this playoffs comes two weeks time. I'm going to throw it over to Talents while I try and get an interview with our victors, Deep Fried Ming Balls, real quick. Let's see if I can get another interview coming in here. All right, gonna get an interview. I'm gonna hop down. Oh, I can't hop to that lobby. I gotta hop to this lobby here. And wait for our victors to come in here. Hello, sir. Oh, hello, hello. Welcome, Captain Hen, Captain of Deep Fried Ming Balls. Congratulations on your 2-0 victory over Wood League Express. How's the team feeling right now? Why? Uh, exhausted, I <laughs> think, is a, is a good word. Yeah, exhausted for sure. It looks like you guys were definitely getting uh, pressure back into you in both of those games at different points. But, you know, doing that kind of bend but don't break mentality coming out from your team there. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, yeah, we, <laughs> we knew we were up for a fight with these guys and uh, they absolutely delivered. Yeah, they, they, that was an absolute pleasure to be able to watch. I do believe I got to watch the first matchup. It definitely wasn't this close. And Wood League Express definitely coming back, throwing toe-to-toe -to -toe against you guys. But you definitely found your way to make success. So let's get back in to this series. Going back into game number one, was it was you guys that picked Full Sky of Foundry, correct? Yes, it was. Okay, that's I, th I thought that was it. And that seems to be something that you guys are a little more comfortable on. Definitely have uh, a, a good strategy going in there. But, I mean, when you saw the Valera not get banned out, how much were you like, I want it, I want it, I want it? Uh, yeah, well, we um, I first picked the Brightwing because I was going to heal. Um, and then uh, we just had a few uh, choice, um, you know, uh, words uh, towards the end of... Uh, the draft and decided so and so would step into healing and i was like well valera is open uh and that is uh a lot of fun to play yeah i mean i i once i uh, we're it was getting called out in chat it gets seems to get called out every time you guys play like somebody's calling you out like oh we may see a hen valir here so i was like okay well it's not banned so maybe they're just holding it for that last pick sure enough it gets locked in there but you had the Orphea and Tomb combination coming out of the Leoric. Looking like that was your guys' strategy. Just get those two on the same page and be able to use that sheer amount of damage to push the opposing team off. Was working out pretty well until suddenly you got to that third protector phase on the core. And it seemed like the team just couldn't figure out what they wanted to do. They want to go kill the Janitor. They wanted to go kill the core. What was going on in that fight where you guys were just kind of... Too, too focused there and not able to necessarily get the result that you wanted. Yeah, I mean, I I did flirt with the idea of going up and just trying to um, duel the Jaina in top lane, but yeah, it, it didn't feel right. I think we were a couple of people down as well, um, and we'd had some pretty hard engages with them. Um, you know, the, the two team fights that we'd had previously, they they walked away, um, you know, really ha hammering us. Uh, so it was just, uh, try and defend that last point and, uh, you know, keep the team together more than anything else. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but it, I mean, it was, it was kind of a thing where it's like, you got the core to 32% and I was like, all right, like, you know, it looked like the team wanted to end, but then they were chasing the Jaina, but then they wanted to end, get the core to 32%. And then, uh, we get that fourth protector phase coming online. It looked like Wood League Express may have potentially had the advantage there, uh, losing a, you guys lose a couple members, but then you set up the delay. And at what point were you guys like, Hey, let's just backdoor this with the win minions instead of, uh, trying to fight over this protector. Yeah, that that was um, Leo. So Kirk uh, made that call out. Just just watching the uh, the minions hitting the core, and we were like, well, the armor's gone. Uh, and by the time we got there, I mean, when we looked at it, it was about twenty two percent. I think by the time we got there, it was down to sort of 
five ish. Um, Jaina was doing a good job defending it, but we had three people there and we just uh, got the cheeky little back door. Yeah, I was going to say, everybody on One League Express were like, okay, we got the protector, let's go. And then it's like, oh, wait, we forgot to clear the minions. And everybody on Team Fried Bean Boss is like, hi, we're already here. <laughs> yeah. We're, we're going to take this now. But uh, get in the back door. And it's a good thing you did because, I mean, like you had mentioned, Wood League Express, you know, the later that game got, it started to feel like they were building a little bit of momentum there. But got away with the win, getting over to game number two. They pick Alteric Pass. How much homework did Deep Fried Ming Balls do, knowing what Wood League Express really likes that map? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll be honest. It feels like uh, Deep Fried Ming Balls only play on two maps. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> We seem to just get Volskaya and Alterac uh, <laughs> literally every time we play. Um, so yeah, we, we know what they can do on there. We've played them on Alterac as well, and we've scrimmed with them on Alterac too. So um, yeah, we just we I've seen High Admiral just run rings around people with Murky on that map, uh, and just did not want to see that today. Yeah, um, yeah. So yeah, I, th I think our bands were on point. Uh, for the research we put into that team, we know the Malganus, Malfurion lockdown that they can do as well. Yes, uh, and those and those tight little spots, particularly on the uh, bottom objective on uh, Alterac Pass, is is just nasty for all that CC they can throw out. Yeah, so I mean the the Malganus homework, I was like, yeah, that that that's definitely a good bet. Getting rid of the Malfurion for sure. Uh, they got the Chromie that they like, but it seemed like you guys were able to just kind of knock them off their their typical comfort picks on Alteric Pass enough where the early game was in your guys' favor. But then again, we come into that mid lane and it was it just, we completely forgot that we didn't see anybody on the map. They, they go down and they get that boss. And uh, it felt like the, there just wasn't quite a good, like deep fried Ming Ball suddenly were like, I, I don't know, dude, do we go to the boss? Do we clear out the mid wave? Do we go for our top boss? Do we go for the objective? What was going on in that kind of mid game transition? Yeah, there was definitely, um, that that moment of, of um, well, Seal, Seal called out they were going for the top boss uh, after they got that first boss. I think at that point we probably thought they were just going back to their siege mm -hmm. um, and not necessarily, you know, it was. I think they took this the first boss pretty early in the game, so uh, I think it was a bit of a surprise. And then um, while we were clearing that, Seal made the call, saw them up top, and we were like, oh, oh crap, <laughs> we've got to watch for that. Um, but yeah, too late. Arrived much too late for that, and then the. Um, the Chromie, um, the CC. I mean, our, our hats off to. And I, I don't remember who was the Chromie player. I think it was. Was it Novabot? No, it was Ice Queen. Ice, Ice Queen. Queen. I mean, hats off to Ice Queen. The um, it made it so hard for me to get a taunt off uh, as Varian just forever slowed, which is just dropping that right on our uh, Gazlo and our Varian and just making it really hard to land our engages. Uh, and then they they got both our frontline uh, characters uh, on that second boss engage as well. So yeah, that felt like a pretty rough point for us in that game we we were definitely uh starting to to recalculate what our tactics were yeah i i as a tank main i definitely was feeling pity pain for you on the variant having to go against both a chromie and a brightwing like you're you're sitting there like I, yeah. I've got to get by these sands. I have to, and then you finally get by it and you're like, yes, victory, I've gotten by the sands only to be polymorphed I feel like I got one good taunt off in that game. It's <laughs> so front the like their composition the is like so frustrating for a Varian. I I I would have been losing it left, right, and center. I'd have been like, guys, I can't do anything. But I was, uh, I was getting pretty quiet on the comms. I was just like, this sucks. <laughs> it really does. I don't blame you one bit. I'm like sitting here like, oh, my heart goes out to them because, yeah. I mean, but thankfully for how difficult it was for you, that just gave Silver much more opportunity to find his angles to get that Li Ming value that you guys, I, we talked about in the previous interview of your last one, you know, can't play, as you mentioned, can't play a series without pulling Li Ming out once. I mean, it's in the name. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's there in the name. Um, yeah. And you know, if you can't get a taunt off, you may as well just be a human punching bag or meat bag or <laughs> there you go. and let your DPS uh, get in and do that job. I think um, that, that last fight on the bottom objective, uh, Sil playing Cassia did some did some real work. Um, and of course, yeah, I mean, Silver on a mage is just uh, a sight to behold as always. Yeah. Alrighty. Well, I mean, 
for what I can see, this could very well potentially be a, there could be a series number three come in playoff time in the finals with the Express versus Deep Fried Ming Balls. I believe you guys have the 2-0 series lead so far, but I really hope that this is going to be, there's going to be a round three going because it looked very, very close between these two teams. Yeah, and I, I um, you know, I've got to salute uh, the High Admiral and his team. I know, um, yeah, we had a great chat the first time we played them. Uh, I think, what did he say? A kick in the teeth makes the jaw stronger. Uh, <laughs> and, you like know, it. Wood League. Yeah, I like it too. Uh, you know, Wood League have, have studied us like we've studied them. And, like, you know, their their improvement from start of the season to where they are now. And you know, I think um, if, if they're not in second space uh, by the end of the season, I'll be very surprised. Like, the momentum they've shown is just... Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. But before I let you go, I actually got two things, and you know what those two things are. I ask them every week. So first things, who do you think your team MVP was for the series tonight? Um, oh, look, you, you can't deny Silver the uh, the amount of damage, and uh, and particularly, I think his Li Ming on the second match uh, was what sort of kept us going. You know, zero death, seven kills, um, epic damage coming out. Um, I mean, his Orphea play is always awesome, but um, yeah, I think, and he was he was doing some really good shot calling tonight. I mean, he always does good shot calling, but um, I think tonight we, uh, yeah, we needed that leadership on the team, so got to give it to Silver. Awesome, yeah, giving it to Silver there, coming out doing a clutch performance, and I was I was mentioning him in the early game, like, is he going to be able to, you know, this is going to be a tough match. How how much is Silver going to shine on his mages and? That Orphea performance was absolutely... I can't... I have no idea. I mean, it's attributed to the team, too. How many times those crushing jaws got six-plus value? Like, the, uh, sorry, the Eternal Feast, not crushing jaws, but the Eternal Feast getting, like, six, seven chomps in. I was like, holy cow, he's continuing to get these massive Eternal Feasts over and over. But uh, last things last, as always, I'm going to open up the floor to you. Any shout-outs you'd like to give to Twitch chat? The floor is yours. Um, yeah, to, to Woodley Express, you you know, the whole team, um, hi, Admiral, you guys are just, you're, you're an absolute um, pleasure to play. We love playing you guys. Um, you know, you probably see in the chat um, when you're casting the, uh, you know, the banter that goes backwards and forwards with these guys. Um, you know, they're, they're just, they're just good people. And, and um, so thanks, guys. We love it. Um, as always, the uh, Silver Arrow fan club that uh, joins every one of our, um, <laughs> our cast. <laughs> Thank you for the love. Um, I haven't seen anything yet. I'm sure there's a question about when I'm having fish and chips with someone. And <laughs> I forgot about whatever, that last one. Whatever it's whatever it's going to be. Um, and yeah, again, just just to everyone on the deep fried ming bowls. Um, you know, you guys rock. I don't even think we got a full team practice session in today, but um, you know everyone's just they, they know their spots now and they know what they're doing and yeah playing playing a really solid season so thanks team all righty awesome 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 so glad to have you on the channel again looking forward to potentially snagging a playoff appearance hopefully maybe the finals or at least the semifinals who knows we'll see but looking forward to the playoffs in division e west with deep fried ming balls and wood league express down the road but thank you so much captain hen for the interview always a pleasure as man love your casting thank you very much absolutely take care all right, ladies and gentlemen, that was Captain Hen, captain of our deep fried Ming balls, coming away with the 2-0 victory. Awesome things. And by the way, y'all are awesome, but y'all are jerks making me take four more drinks. But a deal's a deal. I put it on the channel for a reason. You can hear the cap coming off. Let me get all four of these drinks in before we go any further. All righty. Four drinks down. I've literally almost gone through two full bottles of water. And sadly, I don't have to pee yet. So I guess that means that I'm sweating way too much, having way too fun of a time here, or I was just severely dehydrated before the cast. But let me get through chat real quick, see if there's anything that I missed. I know there's a lot of talk going on, a lot of stuff about just that epic last fight going on. Uh, too bad for all of us that Div E that Ming Balls was so... Oh, okay. Um, you know, I don't... I'm gonna go out on a limb. I, I definitely am not a person that likes to favor... I mean, yes, it can happen every season. There are mistakes that are made. I wouldn't even call them mistakes. Different teams 
just come into form. It's really hard. I always say give so much credit to the placement crew. They had to place 170 or 150 teams this season and divide them as evenly as they could into anywhere from Storm Division to Division E. So their job is insanely hard, and they have to just get as much information as they possibly can from each of these individual players and figure out a way to put them in uh, the most competitive division that they can. And, uh, you know, sometimes teams can just dominate, like we're seeing it in Division D with Cloud Mines. We're seeing it in, you know, E with Deep Fried Mean Balls. There's divisions, uh, Nexus Division, there's a team that's completely undefeated there as well. It's not necessarily necessarily that they're misplaced because you know those teams can get absolutely stomped if they go up another division it's just that they for the division they're in they they're just they're on point they're they're good enough to control their division but then they get bumped up i mean i can use my own team as an example in heroes lounge where we were a division four team we were looking like i think we went undefeated in a season and then we went up and played two division three teams and we got smashed against two division three teams so like you know where do you put us at the very, very bottom of division three or, you know, top, it, it, it's really a tough thing for those things. And I think they do an absolutely amazing job. So, you know, all credit suit where credit suit. The, you know, the story here is deep fried Ming balls. They're playing very well, very cohesive here with league express. They are absolutely coming into form. They took deep fried Ming balls. And I mean, I know the games didn't look super close in the kills, but these games were super, super close. There were team fights that if they had just gone one or two kills the other direction, it was a deep, completely different game. I mean, in game one, Little League Express was coming back with the Fury. So I think these two teams and potentially Flint Tropics, who are in their division as well in that number two spot right now, all three of those teams, both those teams and uh, you know, all three of those teams could potentially come away with the victory here. At any given Sunday, any team could beat anybody kind of deal. So definitely shout out to the uh, crew going in through there. That's just my humble, this caster's humble opinion there. Um, but yeah, I'll get off my soapbox now with that. Seems like there's just a lot of people giving examples similar to, oh, even my team was mentioned by Harkins. So yeah, there you go. I gave my own my own team a mention, but I've seen it all the time. It always evens out and always gets fun around playoffs because sometimes those dark horses come behind to just snag a win. Um... Yeah, that's looking like everything else in chat um, going through here. But uh, that that's where uh, I'm probably going to at least end for the chat. Thank you all so much. For, I believe we got like 12 follows tonight. You guys are awesome. Like, thank you so much for all of the follows. I really hope you're having as much of a fun time as, on this channel as I am. I definitely enjoy casting and putting up... Uh, great content for everybody here and just having a fun time on this channel. That's what I enjoy. And I love that everybody's so active in chat. I wish I could keep up with it. Uh, but I, I'm not the best at that. But coming into this week, what we've got coming forward, tomorrow night I have my own series that I'm playing in. So when that ends, I'll see if there's anything that I could potentially pick up. But I may just take tomorrow night off. Then on Wednesday, I do not cast on Wednesday nights. I work late, so I do not cast Wednesday nights. But Thursday, I've got something coming down the line. Uh, pay attention to the calendar on my Twitch, and you can see what it is. I don't remember off the top of my head who I've got coming up on Thursday night. And then we get to the weekend, and I have two matches coming up this weekend because I was one of those people who, unfortunately, even though we scheduled way ahead of time for one of the matches, we just have our last two matches. Our flex matches are on the last two days of the season. So I got some series I got to play, but then next week we start playoffs and I am super excited for that. So again, they all oh, wait. <laughs> Kirkery Kirk, or Kerkero 66 coming in with one more take a drink, man. So, okay. That's the last one I'm doing. Good thing. I didn't do like beer tonight or you guys would have me just on the floor. One last drink of water coming in. All right, there it is, redeemed. Last one of the night. I'm cutting everybody off. No more redemptions for taking a drink. I'm going to have to pee like a racehorse in a couple minutes, but we've got some more matches in here. Thank you all so much for joining. I'm going to send you guys over 
uh, make sure I spell her name right to Fujin's channel for some Division C matchup. There is one more match going on tonight, so uh, I will throw this raid over. Make sure you drop some love on Fujin's channel. She does an awesome job streaming uh, and doing delivering a lot of content. Streams more than I do or casts more than I do. So have a fantastic night, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you all on Thursday night. Take care, everyone.